Hey guys, I remember Vinyl, Season 1, Episode 7, The King and I, when I was definitely looking forward to this episode. Like I said, Episode 6 really regained my faith in this show, really made me hope that the show was going to be better, and this was a great episode. I loved this episode. There were some amazing things about it. Pretty close to my favorite episode of the season. I don't know if it was better than last week's, but I think it was right up there with last week's. Besides some stupid scenes in the opening, I really loved this episode. That was a very strong one. There were a lot of really great scenes in this this one, but let's just get into it because I really love this episode overall. Um, and this was definitely the episode where we finally are starting to see Richie kind of reinvent himself and kind of just change things around, which I like seeing because right away we see he's reading this book, The Farther Reaches of Human Nature by H. Maslow, and he tells Cece to remove all of the alcohol from his office, literally everything that he has. Every drink, every sip, just everything, just remove it. And, uh, I mean, she's freak she's shocked because, you know, this is Richie that always drinks. This is Richie that's always having drugs and things like that. And he's getting rid of it. He doesn't want to use it anymore. And he wants to be sober, which... I like seeing, I like seeing Richie actually try to turn things around, because the show is implied that Richie's going to do that, but then they go back and show that he's not going to do that, and this episode shows that he definitely is going to try to turn things around, and I definitely really like seeing that, because I was thinking he wasn't going to, but this episode really implies that, yes, he is in fact serious this time, he is actually going to turn things around, I was very happy about that. And basically, she wheels the bar into the lobby, co-workers swarm in, they're grabbing bottles, they don't really know what's going on with Richie, why he's acting this way, because they've never really seen Richie act like this before, they've never actually hear him just put down the bottle and just not drink, obviously, which is interesting. And I don't think he's doing drugs either, because we don't see him do cocaine this episode, so he really is trying to turn things around, which is very interesting. So he then heads to the conference room, where the other partners are in the process of cutting up company credit cards and searching for any hidden fat on the books to help them stay afloat, and... Uh, they're not really happy with Richie because of the fact that now they're modernizing things and things are changing and Richie's telling them that they're just handing out receipts now that's what they're gonna do and uh, they're just trying to find any possible money that they have because they're gonna go broke they're going broke they don't have a lot of money and Richie though tells them that he has this arranged this possible sale of the company jet to Lou Meshiji on a business rival in, in LA and uh, Zach isn't too happy about Richie going to LA alone because the money from the sale of the plane could temporarily Richie to start using again, because if he has this money, I mean, what's he going to do? He thinks that he's going to use it on drugs and drinking and things like that, but Richie's telling him, no, that's not going to happen this time. Everything's going to be fine. I want to do this alone. It has to be today, and uh, the only thing I don't like about this scene is Scott. Can we just get rid of this character? He's not doing anything for me. He's not working for me, and he's not funny. Like, when they're talking about the plane, he's talking about, oh, if there's a plane crash or whatever. He's not a funny guy. He's, his humor's really mean-spirited. It really feels out of place and I understand he's supposed to be like that but I don't like his character I'm not enjoying him just get rid of him I don't like him really he represents everything about the show I don't like and I don't want Scott to be on the show if you can kill him off that's fine I don't care how you do it just get him off because I like I said I'm not really enjoying Scott as a character he's not a bad character well actually he is kind of a bad character if they gave him more to do that than just complain then I'd be fine because right now his entire character is just him complaining over and over again I really want them to do something different with him because they have yet to which kind of sucks because like I said I really do think they should be doing something different with him and they're not uh, but we do see that Zach invites himself along because he basically feels he needs to be someone to control Richie because Richie needs someone to kind of keep him at bay and he thinks that he's going to do that and Richie's really upset and they end this huge fight over why he's there which I like that Richie asks him you know why are you here why do you need to be here and you know Zach's saying you can't be alone I need to be there for you you need someone to watch you and Zach feels that he needs to do that that he needs to keep watch of Richie and that he's the person that can calm him down which we kind of seen that Richie, that Zach can do that, and the rest of this episode is Zach and Richie, and that's what I loved about this episode, is that skip all those guys, we don't really see them after that one scene, we see Richie and Zach, and then we have one other thing that I'll get into, but most of this episode was Zach and Richie on this trip, and I really enjoyed that, because we haven't seen a whole lot of Zach and Richie bonding, we've seen it here and there, we've seen how Richie's affected Zach, but I think this was the first episode where we truly saw how these two bond, how they affect each other how they really are and how far they've come which I definitely love seeing I love seeing this um, on the show I thought this was very good and I definitely enjoyed it and of course they're fighting over the scene that he caused at Karen's bat mitzvah because Zach has still not forgiven him for that um 
because of the fact that, you know, Rishi really made a scene there and he really embarrassed him. And because of that, his family, it's he kind of needs to get away from them for a little bit. So that's the only other reason why he's going to L.A. He wants to take a trip to get away from his family. You got to feel bad for Zach because the main reason that all happened is because of Richie. And I think Zach understands that. But he also knows that he went a bit too far. He went a bit too far. Him and Richie got into a fight and... Uh, you see that Zach really does want to turn things around. He wants to help Richie. I like seeing that. But Zach also reassures Richie. And R Zach's not there to just yell at Richie. He's there for more reasons. He's there because he actually wants to be a friend to him. He also tells Richie that Devin will, in fact, come back to him because he knows that Richie's upset about Devin, who we don't see her in this episode. I'm sure we're going to see Devin again, but we did not see her in this episode, which I thought was actually very powerful because it shows how Richie moves on without her, and I like seeing that. Um, but Zach also, they get in this really funny scene where Zach asks, you know, what's your secret? How does Devin keep coming back to you? Kind of a funny scene. I like the way that was done. Definitely very interesting there. Um... But basically, they're on the road for this trip. They're going to go to uh, L.A. And Richie calls the flight attendant for more beverages. And Richie's drinking Coca-Cola. He really is trying to stay sober. He's not drinking alcohol. And Zach is drinking 18-year-old Ard Began whiskey. And for a brief moment, Richie becomes transfixed on the number 18. Now, why 18? I know there's something about the number 18, but... What is it about it? I, I can't figure it out. You know, this entire episode, every time Richie sees the number 18, he's, like, fascinated by it. And I don't know exactly why, what that has to do with anything. But throughout this entire episode, Richie seems to be a bit paranoid by whatever he sees the number 18. And is there something I'm missing here, guys? I mean, maybe you could tell me if there's something I'm missing. But in this episode, I really couldn't tell what they were trying to do with that. But it's a very interesting device, the way they did that. And it does show that while Richie's trying to turn things around, the power past is coming back to haunt him, you can definitely tell, and I like seeing that. I mean, not the past, like, 11, 22, 63, and what's going on there. The past is in, things he's done in the past, they're coming back to haunt him, because that's still the man he is, and he's trying to turn things around and fix things, but this number 18, I mean, kind of seems like the thing that's kind of pulling him back in, which, again, I don't know what this means, and that very much fascinates me. So, what is it about the number 18? That's, I, I, I don't really know. I can't tell, guys. Very interesting stuff, but I don't really know what the number 18 is all about. So... Then we see Jamie's surprised uh, to see her mother having tea with her sister-in-law. And the other plot we get in this episode revolves around Jamie and Clark and kind of how they're similar in the same situation, and I like seeing that. We've seen Jamie and Clark interact before, but just like Richie and Zach, this was really our episode to see how Jamie and Clark treat each other, how they really feel about each other, and I really like seeing that. As we know, Jamie's mother does not want her to work at American Century. She does not want her to work there. She wants her to take over the restaurant. She thinks it's silly she wants to work there, and uh, she wants to find something more suitable. Even if she doesn't want to take over the family business, just find something that's better. And I get what her mother's trying to say, that, you know, when you become this record executive, you have all these decisions to make, you're going to go crazy over it, you're going to grow too powerful, and it's just not a good job to have. I mean, record executives don't last very long, and Jamie's really upset. You can tell that she really wants this, and out of everything, this is what she wants. She wants to be record executive, and she doesn't care what her mother says, even though her mother's not happy about it. She doesn't care what she says, and she storms out. And I like seeing that in Jamie. I mean, something I've always loved about Jamie is how confident she really is. You know, she doesn't care what others think of her. She doesn't care what others want her to do. She does what she wants to do. And that's one of the reasons why I think Jamie's such a great character. And honestly, I'm really loving her character more and more as we see her. And especially this episode, I definitely really enjoyed um, her character. She was really great here. I also really like Clark in this episode because Clark is having trouble fitting in with his coworkers in the mailroom. There's this great scene where he says something and they completely ignore him. And then the guy, this other guy, that's working there says the same exact thing and they listen to him so it's clear that he really doesn't get to say much and they have a chip on their shoulder because they feel their former co-worker Hector was fired in order to give Clark a job so they're really not happy with Clark clearly they like this guy Hector and that he's now unemployed and that Clark has filled the void of Hector but he's not filling the void they don't like Hector they don't like Clark very much he doesn't fit in with them and you can just tell that Clark doesn't really feel happy there like he really feels like he's out of place and he's really really upset about that, but I did like this arc for Clark that we got. I thought it was very interesting. I definitely, arc for Clark, I thought that, I don't know, that was kind of funny. Um, I like what we got with Clark in this episode. I definitely really enjoyed that, and I like that we saw Clark actually vulnerable, because we've seen Clark this entire season, you know, people not really liking him or whatever, but I think this was really the episode where we showed that Clark will do anything to keep his job. Even if the people don't like him, he will try to keep his job, and I definitely like seeing that. Really good stuff with Clark in this episode, I have to say. I definitely enjoyed that. Um, 
the deal to sell the jet goes through without a hitch. Lou pays it for it in with ninety ninety thousand dollars and uh, ninety million actually. And Lou invites Richie and Zach to a beach party he's throwing that day at his house in Malibu. And Richie takes one last look at the jet and notices the letters and numbers on the tie on the tail are N seven D P eighteen. Again, the number eighteen. What is it about the number eighteen? I don't know, but everything is eighteen in this episode, which is very interesting. So begrudgingly, Richie and Zach decide to go with the intention of trying to woo some of Lou's ex over to American Century, and also, I think, just to take a vacation. They kind of just want to relax, they want to get away from all that drama, but this is also a way to get some acts over to American Century, because they need those acts there, you know, even though they have the nasty bits, they need other acts, and... I definitely like seeing that, and I like that they kind of try to do a double dip here. You know, they're like, all right, we're going to take a vacation, but we'll also try to get some acts to American Century, and I definitely enjoyed seeing that. So, they meet some people in attendance. I don't know if these people are real, but Graham Parsons, Mama Cass, Mickey Dolenz, and Fabian are among those in attendance. And Parsons gets into a new AG conversation about Joshua Tree with Richie, who listens with rapt attention because Joshua Tree is someone that he's very interested in. And then Zach over here's conversation about Elvis being unhappy at RCA Records. Yes, we meet Elvis in this episode. And uh, again, just like the David Bowie episode, it didn't feel like, uh, you know, it didn't feel like Elvis was just shoehorned in here. By the way, Zach did talk about that whole thing with David Bowie and how David Bowie's singing really affected him. And it was a really good scene. I like Zach talking about that, saying how. This wasn't actually David Bowie, but it was someone who sang the song with soul, and it kind of gave him re found, kind of gave him faith and everything. I really like that scene, definitely. And basically, he immediately hunts down Richie to tell him because obviously, if Elvis is there, I mean, they get to talk to him and they could possibly recruit him to American Century. I mean, they're not going to recruit him to American Century, but they could at least meet Elvis, which you guys know in the you know in the seventies, Elvis wasn't as big as a deal, but he still was out there. Like he wasn't as big as the fifties and sixties, but he still was around, definitely, and everyone still really did of Elvis, and basically, they're leaving the party, they're heading for Vegas, and, uh, that's what they want to do, that basically, um, I really like the way that that was done. Definitely very interesting with Elvis. And again, it didn't feel shoehorned in. So then we get this really great scene with Jamie and Clark and kind of how Clark says that he was in her position three years ago and now he's back in her position and he's pissed that Jamie now has a higher position in the company. And it's not because of who she is. It's just the fact that she he was in her position three years ago, then he wasn't, and now he's back to being in her position. And you can tell that he's really upset about that. And he also talks about how he loved to have her job and everything and kind of talks about if he was this girl and Jamie gives him a pep talk to him to be more aware and observant and that the best thing to do is just be more aware try to interact with some people try to try to you know enjoy his job more because it's it's you know it's just his job for right now and it was a good scene I like the advice that Jamie gave him and again that advice of just the can do attitude that Jamie has that nothing's gonna get in the way and she you see that with Clark Clark definitely isn't as confident as Jamie but Jamie wants him to be and I definitely really like that really good scene there and just a really nice scene between these two I really enjoyed enjoyed it. So Zack and Richie bribe their way into the hotel where Elvis and Colonel Parker are staying. Colonel Parker has agreed to an impromptu meeting after Elvis finishes his concert, which Richie and Zack are definitely going to attend, obviously because it's Elvis, and Richie is to wait for a call from the Colonel, who will sit in on the conversation, basically if they're going to recruit Elvis, or if they can have Elvis for an American Century or something. And Zack has a habit of rambling incessantly when in the midst of music royalty. First we saw with David Bowie, and again it's with Elvis because, you know, he just gets starstruck, and it's really funny. I like that about Zach's character, and basically the more Zach says, the more fidgety Richie gets, because he doesn't want him to ruin this, obviously, because Zach, you know, saying all this stuff could be ruined, and this is a one-time opportunity. They could get they could get Elvis to record some American Century, and then... That would make them, you know, really popular. Everyone would listen to them again. Because remember, American Century is not really that popular right now. And no one really likes American Century that much. Doing this, though, would make them popular. And doing this would get them what they want. And he doesn't want Zach to ruin it, obviously. Which I thought was interesting. So back in New York, we see Corzo in the midst of a payola transaction with the program director for a popular New York radio station when Maury and Galasso stop by a table. And Corzo pr probably has had three too, uh, too many drinks, introduces Gold and Galasso by name, and, uh, 
Basically, unknown to Coors, the two detectives who question Richie and the death of Buck are sitting a few tables away listening. So you can definitely tell they're getting suspicious of Coors, though. They're clearly trying to look into him. They suspect that Corzo did this, which doesn't surprise me because I think they've known that Corzo's involved with this kind of crime before. We know he's done this sort of thing. So to him, it's not as big as a deal, but he doesn't know his detectives are listening. Remember, Corzo says, oh, nothing bad's going to happen. Everything's going to be good. And now things are happening. And I don't think Corzo realizes how serious a situation this is going to be because it seems like episode eight. Then Corzo's going to realize what's going on and things are going to get really crazy. And we only have three episodes left. So I definitely think this is setting up the rest of the season, which is going to be crazy. So Richie arranged for two women to hang up by the hotel pool with he and Zach. They all get along really well. And I gotta say, those women were definitely attractive. Even though they were in their, like, 30s or whatever, I don't really care. They were quite attractive, definitely. I definitely would have gotten along well with them. And you can tell right away that Zach is definitely getting along well with them. They're talking very sexually, things like that. And... Richie decides to invite them to the Elvis concert, this way that he has an audience, this way that they kind of have an audience as well. You can tell they're really enjoying themselves. It was a nice scene. I enjoyed seeing that. I like seeing them hang out, and uh, I like that they didn't recognize who Richie and Zach were. Like, they didn't say, oh, we're from American Century or everything. They didn't really, you know, recognize them, because right now, like I said, American Century is not really a thing anymore. And plus, who knows what who a record executive is? No one really knows that. Unless you really do that kind of research, and unless you really are into that kind of field, no one really knows who a record executive is. They know who the artist is, and they know who the company is, but they don't really know who the record executives are, and that's something I really thought they did well in this episode. You know, Richie never came across as this uh, douchey guy that thinks that, oh, everyone should know me, and everyone should know who I am, because I thought that's where we were going to go at first with this episode, but luckily we didn't. I was very happy with him, because this is the Richie I like seeing. I don't want to see that Richie in episode five. This was much more closer to the Richie I wanted to see. So Clark returns to the mail room, demanding respect from his co-workers, and with the help of a joint, he actually gets it, because he's assertive. He shows them that he wants it, and it's a good scene. It shows that Clark really does care about his job, he really does want to turn things around, and he really is taking Jamie's advice, which I definitely really like. And even though he doesn't have the most respect for Jamie, he doesn't care. That just that advice that she gave him was very good, I definitely really like that, and really good stuff there. But here is when the episode gets really sad, actually. I thought this was very well done here. Zack is already wasted before the Elvis show and only gets worse that the king doesn't perform any of his classics and Zach is just yelling at him saying where's this song where's this song he's singing like a song about um salad and Zach's really upset about that and he's allowed to catch the attention of Colonel Parker sitting on the other side of the room and Richie knows that the Colonel ushers the group out of the auditorium because again this is a once in a lifetime opportunity he doesn't want to ruin it and he notices again they were sitting at table 18 what is it about the number 18 it just constantly haunts him and I don't know what it's about so Richie decides to try his hand at roulette with a drunken coked out Zach egging him on and as Richie starts to win on the number 18 again you know it's the number 18 Zach urges him to go for the jackpot which they can add to the 90 million dollars they have in their room, and this is the best way to do that, and the two women ac accompanying Richie and Zach, they exchange a glance at the mention of the money, and right away you can tell that these two girls are probably not good. You can definitely tell that they probably want money, they're probably con artists, and they're probably gonna end up conning Richie and Zach, which this was common back then. I mean, there were people that would hustle you, and there are still people nowadays that will hustle you, but definitely in the 70s it was much more common, and Richie decides to walk away with his winnings because he doesn't want to get any more money, and he doesn't want anything bad to happen. So they all turn the hotel room where Zach is double teamed by the women as Richie looks on and then excuse himself to get more champagne and uh, basically we see that they end up in kind of like a threesome. Zach puts them on the bed and everything and Zach is beyond drunk at this point but it seems like he's going to have sex with these two so Richie just leaves him to do that and Richie says leave some for me but you can also tell he's not really happy that Zach got drunk and everything because he's kind of botched this but Richie's going to make up for this. He's not going to let this one thing ruin this opportunity. He's going to try to fix this and we get this really Really great scene between Richie and Elvis because like I said you have Elvis on the show okay that's really great but what they could have done is just shoehorned him in and done some really stupid stuff what they actually do though I think is the best use of a guest star they've done so far because Richie ends up in Elvis's room and the two have this really intense conversation really passionate conversation and Elvis a bit skittish at first finally realizes that he and Richie are totally in sync with what they want out of the music business they want new they want different they want raw sounding instruments they want stuff that actually sounds good they don't just want to hear the same stuff over and over again and I feel like that's kind Kind of how it is today like we have so many similar artists and it's very hard to find something new when something new comes out everyone praises them i mean i could give you a million i, I can't really give you an example of someone that's new new but there definitely are examples that everyone's praised and things like that um 
For example, if you guys know Kendrick Lamar, he released an album called The Pimba Butterfly last year. Everyone praised it because it sounded like an old-time album, and it's very hard to do that nowadays. You know, it sounded like old instruments was all raw sound. There was no auto-tune, things like that. Um, and you can tell that they really are on the same page here. It was a really good scene. I really enjoyed seeing that. Richie talks about the nasty bits and how they're this great band. They're not great yet, but they could be really great, and they really affected him. And uh, I just Elvis talks about how he wants that kind of thing, too. And Colonel Parker bursts through the door and says that Richie didn't wait for his call because he didn't do the right thing. Elvis cowers in Colonel Parker's presence, asks Richie to fill the colonel in on their conversation. And at the colonel's request, Elvis introduces Richie in a martial arts demonstration, which leaves a startled Richie on the floor with Elvis literally pointing a pistol on his face and uh Elvis says it's kind of like an adrenaline rush. Like, it makes Richie kind of, like, full of adrenaline and things like that, which was interesting. I like the way that was done. Colonel Parker tells Richie to leave, and you can tell that this is going to go well, that he did, in fact, get to talk to Elvis, and it's a really good scene. I mean, again, it didn't feel shoehorned in. It felt like it made sense why this happened. I like the way that scene was done. And the way that Elvis, you see, is kind of crazy, I thought was interesting as well, the way they did that. So Richie returns to his hotel room. He's looking for Zach, and Zach is passed out naked. The room's in shambles, and the two women are nowhere to be found. Where they are, we don't know, um, but the room's in shambles, and Richie wakes Zach as he comes to think he immediately thinks about the money from the sale of the jet, and he runs to the closet where he put the bag containing the 90G, and he brings it back out, and it's gone. It's completely gone, and I love the way this scene was done, because at first, Richie flips out, and Zach, obviously, he's really pissed, but then he actually tells Zach that it's okay, that these things happen, and that everyone fucks up sometimes, that he's not upset that he did this, um, that they came so close. It's a really nice scene, because before, I thought Richie was going to flip out on him and be like, why did I bring you here and everything? But no, Richie actually says, look, I understand, you messed up, it's okay, we'll be able to do this again, and uh, I like the way that scene was done, that there are other opportunities for money. <laughs> And I really like that. I like that scene. They still had a good trip, even though the go the girls conned them. They didn't know that at the time, right? I think Richie kind of had an inkling, but the girls conned them clearly. The girls left with the money, and he's upset with Zach, but at the same time, he understands why Zach did this, because Richie also is fucking up. He's not a perfect guy. Zach's not perfect either, and it really does show that, and I really like that. And on the flight back, Zach is really miserable. He's hungover. He's still more about losing the money, and Richie is trying to think of what this number 18 means, because he keeps hearing the number 18. He does doesn't know what it's about, but everything is not the Maritian, and it's clear that this is like a pattern in his life, and I don't know what it means, I don't know what it's about, but the number 18, there's some significance there, and we don't know what it is yet. He's still reading Maslow's book, he then gazes out the window lost in thought, retraces the events of the night before in his mind, and uh, he asks the flight attendant for a drink, two bottles of Smirnoff and a cup of ice. She hands him two small bottles, a cup of ice and a cocktail straw. He pours the drink, gulps it down, and places the bottles of um, straw on his book. You can tell that he's going to drink again, and uh, basically the conversation from bottles and the wet stir from the number 18 on the book jacket. We don't know what the number 18's about, but that's basically how the episode ends, and uh, overall, great episode, guys. I really enjoyed this episode. You can really tell that Richie is trying to turn things around. I think he's going to try to drink responsibly, but we don't really know. Let's talk about the number 18. What is this about? Why is he so transfixed on the number 18? I don't really know what that's about. I don't know why he keeps seeing the number 18, but there clearly is some significance with that, and I don't know what it is. Definitely there's something going on there. We just don't really know what that's about. And maybe I haven't been paying attention. I don't know. But to me, that didn't really mean much of anything. So the number 18, very interesting. I like that they didn't get the money because now they have to find another way to get the money. And how they're going to do that, I don't really know. But there are other ways for them to get this money. It's clear they're going to have to do that. How they're going to do it, I, like I said, I don't know. But we'll have to see what happens. Or it's going to be very interesting. And it set up some really interesting things for next week's episode that, you know, Zach and Richie are kind of closer than ever. Zach really understands Richie, realizes that Zach isn't perfect either and that he is gonna fuck up and things like that and even though Zach came to keep Richie from fucking up Zach was the one that I'm fucking up and I like the way that scene was done I like that Clark is getting respect now, and I like the scene with him and Jamie. Really good stuff with them overall. And it does show that even though Clark isn't being as respected as he wants to be, Jamie did have an impact on him, which I really did enjoy. I like the way that was done. The scene with Richie and Elvis, like I said, was very well handled. I definitely really love the way that scene was done with Richie and Elvis. It showed that, like I said, they're much closer, and just they, they, they're a lot closer, and they're a lot 
the, a much they're very much the same than we think there are, and I definitely really enjoyed that scene. Really good stuff there. Uh, Corzo clearly does not understand how serious of a situation this is because the two de de the two detectives are are really listening right there. And if Corzo says anything about Buck's death, I mean, it's just anything. If he even says you know Buck's death, anything like that, they are going to get suspicious. Definitely, they clearly are uh, suspicious of Corzo and. Uh, you can see, tell that they're very much, you know, I think looking into Corzo because they think that he definitely had a stake in this, which obviously he did. He really is the one that killed Buck while Richie kind of just witnessed him do it. Um, but obviously it's not going to end well for anyone. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, what's going to end with the company? Because obviously they didn't get the money. What's going to be the next way they get money? We see next week they're going to try to, but they didn't really get any money. So we'll have to see what they do next week if they're going to try something else. But overall, guys, like I said, I really enjoy this episode a lot more than some of the other ones. Like, Devin, I like we didn't see in this episode. It just was a better thing for Zach and Richie to see them get closer, and I definitely really enjoyed that. Those of you guys saw this episode, like I said, definitely really enjoyed this episode. One of my favorites by far. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be for Supergirl. Yes, I am catching up on Supergirl in because of the Supergirl Flash crossover tonight. That's the main reason. I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.